Okay. Good morning, Wesley Chapel. Good to see everybody. Good to be able to uh, come together on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's so wonderful. Uh, just great to be able to meet together. We've got several announcements that I need to share with you this morning. Um, United Methodist Women will meet tomorrow evening by Zoom at 7 p.m. If you do, uh, if you do not uh, have Zoom capability or choose not to do Zoom, you can call Linda Peeler and she will discuss the one item of business that they have uh, to discuss tomorrow evening. But we'd like to see uh, anybody that wants to join, especially the women, uh, we'd like to have you on the Zoom call tomorrow evening at 7. If I have your email address, I will be sending that Zoom link out uh, sometime this afternoon, later later this afternoon or tomorrow morning. I know that we're getting so many Zoom links, some of us are, that it's hard to keep them separate, but uh, they have some uh, business to discuss and it's good to be able to check in for United Methodist Women tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. <clears throat> Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. We will have a trustees meeting. That will also be a Zoom call. I will get that information to everyone that uh, is supposed to join. If you are supposed to join the Zoom call and don't get the information, please uh, text me, call me, or email me but I'll get that information to you also for that Zoom call for trustees meeting at 7 p.m. Tuesday evening. Impact Youth will be meeting uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, you'll get that information if you're involved with Impact Youth. <clears throat> also, if you did not receive a copy or if you did not get it in your email, the information regarding uh, the Linton project, the thank you notes that we're writing to various entities, uh, public safety, public service, healthcare workers. Trent will be at the exit today with a cart. On that cart, there are, there are, uh, sheets with that information on it about the Linton project. There are newsletters from the previous time. There are upper rooms. There are bracelets. And there are also uh, there are also some uh, some of the some of the material that we passed out uh, Wednesday night at the Ash Wednesday service. If you weren't able to att uh, attend the Ash Wednesday service, and I know that it's hard to get out at night sometimes, there's a cross for you there. We did not uh, we did not use the traditional ashes. Well, we have crosses in a bag, and and with stickers on the outside. Make sure you get one and and take that cross home. And through the uh, season of Lent. Focus on the cross. Focus on the cross as we journey toward uh, the resurrection on that Easter morning. Uh, we are also doing as a missional network a Lenten uh, series. It's called Hymns of Hope, and we're going to. Uh, we're going to be sending links out to your email for that. They will also be posted on uh, Facebook and our, hopefully our website. The first one is Jim Pyatt at New London United Methodist Church. If you uh, were not able to, uh, if you're not able to see this on any of the other ways, you can go to their website and it will be there. The second one will be Matins Grove and Martha McDowell will be uh, hosting that one. So more information, I'll try to send more information out in an email. Uh, if you have anything else of interest that you'd like to uh, share with us, just let us know. You can text me and we'll, uh, we'll get it out. We will continue our celebration today, our observance of Lent. 
This is the first Sunday of Lent, and uh, let's begin with our call to worship. Come, let us worship God, who makes and keeps covenant. Come, see the sign of God's promise in rainbow and rhythm. Come, let us worship Almighty God. Amen. Let us pray. God of storms and rainbows. God of rain. God of sunshine. God of all creation. We worship and adore you. We gaze in wonder at the beauty of your creation and marvel at stormy skies transformed with the vibrant colors of a rainbow like Noah and his family. We praise you for this everlasting sign of your love and care for the whole creation in your desire to preserve and not destroy life. And at Jesus' baptism, the sky again revealed your love when you identified him as your beloved son, strengthening him with the same spirit who empowers and strengthens each of us. For all these assurances of your love for us and for the whole creation, we praise and worship you, O God, in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Our prayer concerns, uh, I want to mention these again. Mitchell Culp, he's doing much better. Uh, Miss Kirk, Kathleen Kirk, she's here with us and doing much, much better. Uh, Keaton Burkett. Keaton says he's doing much, much better after his surgery. He has a, a road to recovery. Uh, Tommy Rogers, uh, Debbie and Michael uh, talked to him this week. He's doing much, much better. Um, Harold Osman, that's uh, Judy May's dad, and he's doing much better. And we give thanks to God for those answered prayers. Our prayer concerns... Uh, Oliver Griffin, Tabitha Overcash, Jimmy White, Robert Lovin, Brenda Barefoot, Carol Griffin, Guy Tipman, Vicki Holt, Jimmy Thompson, Jonathan Hartman, Ricarda Aguirre Laguna, Andrew May, Letha Fuller, Barbara at Forest Oaks, Mandy Blaylock, Reverend and Mrs. Woodrow Frick, uh, Kaylee Foster, Wayne Stokes, Jack Ingram, Carolyn Farr, uh, all those who are still suffering from COVID-19, those frontline workers, and those, all those folks are working feverishly to administer vaccines. Pray earnestly for our leaders, for unity, and for peace throughout our nation and our world. Uh, let's just take a, a few moments and pray together silently, and then I will close. Let us pray. Oh God, hear the prayers of your people as we cry out to you. Oh God, creator of the universe, loving father of us all, every rainbow reminds us that you're in control of the earth, of nature, of the seasons. To the very end, you are in control. Your spirit enriches the earth with the gift of life to all creatures, including us. Help us to look to you in all things. Help us, O oh Lord, to live like the people that you have called us to be. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior, who has taken away all our sins. Oh, Lord, we thank you during this season of Lent that you cause us to look back and to reflect. Lord, we lift up to you our prayer concerns, those that we're aware of, those that we're not aware of, those that uh, need healing and wholeness because we know that you give us life and life abundant. Look favorably on us, oh, Lord, that we might... Be the people you have called us to be and carry out the things 
that you would have us to do. And we ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll receive our morning tithes and offerings. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, as we celebrate the Lenten season and look toward the resurrection, we realize that every gift that we have ever received is because of your love. Bless the gifts that we're about to place before you, O oh Lord. Multiply them your sight and use them to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's Old Testament is Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds. I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Our next Old Testament is Psalms chapter 25, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in, my, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over you. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous, treacherous. Make me known, make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love. For they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord, God, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. For those who keep his covenant and his decrees. Our New Testament is Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 22. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation 
to the spirits in prison, who in former times, in former times, did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water and baptism, which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Thank you. Thank you, Aubrey. Our gospel lesson is from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove and a voice from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. If you have children in the car with you, how about toot your horn? Uh, Jennifer has agreed to uh, share a time for children with us this morning. <laughs> Good morning. So if there's anybody that would be interested in coming up and doing this on Sundays, we'd greatly appreciate it. Just let Sadie or myself know. Um, because we all need to remind or be mindful that we still have kids and you know, children's time and the children's serving is is always special. Um let me take my mask off a little bit. So as Pastor Sandy just read, um, Mark chapter 1, and we, he was talking about um, Jesus' baptism, um, you know, the new year brings new goals and, and resolutions for self-improvement, and for kids and, and adults alike, those, those are not easy to keep at times, but fortunately, we know that Jesus offers new life and fresh opportunities that will take hold of those and rejoice in our forgiveness. There's blessing through baptism, and we remember who we are in Christ. I apologize, it's windy and my papers are flying everywhere. <clears throat> signs are all around us. Some signs are put out, like our church sign, or stop signs. Other signs are seen and heard. Some signs are, you know, like the birds gathering food during the winter. And some people will say, well, snow's coming. Or maybe when you look out and you see the cows laying down in the pastures and you see, oh, rain must be coming. And there's signs from God when there's new trees with buds that spring's coming or the new flowers blooming. Springtime is coming. So <clears throat> there are signs all around us. Some that are put out, that we see, some that are heard. Signs usually tell us something that are important, like a railroad sign warns you that a train track is near. <clears throat> Today we, are, we will be learning about some of the important signs in the life of Jesus. They will help us to know him more and see what happened while he was here on earth. God sent a man named John to preach to the people about being forgiven 
of sins and the things that we do against God, <clears throat> when people would come to confess their sins and be forgiven, John would baptize them. Baptism is a sign. It is a sign. I'm sorry. Baptism is a sign, and it is an outward sign of what Jesus has done for us by dying on the cross. Because of God's love and mercy, he came to earth as a human, and he died for our sins, but did not remain dead. He rose from the dead so that we may rise out of our sins and live for him. When we believe and we, and we repent our sins and trust in Jesus for forgiveness, we may be together forever with God and have a relationship with him here on earth. Now, when Jesus, he came to Naz from Nazareth into Galilee, and he was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open, and the spirit like a dove descended upon him. And a voice came out of the heaven and said, You are beloved son, and in you I am well pleased. <clears throat> Jesus was perfect. He chose to be baptized in the order to show everyone that he was following God and being obedient to his father. There's three things that happened after Jesus was baptized. I just mentioned them. The sky, the heavens opened up and the voice cried out and it was God. Through speaking, he was giving everyone a sign that Jesus was his son. So Jesus is baptized, or his baptism had three very important signs. I know I keep saying that, but that's our important word, signs. We have to look for them throughout life. <clears throat> One sign was his obedience to God. The second sign, it was that Jesus was a follower of God. And the third one was that Jesus was God's son. And God proclaimed him by speaking out to him after his baptism, saying, You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. How the Spirit, and also the Holy Spirit, came out like a dove. It descended down upon Jesus, showing others the sign of the baptism brings new life through the Holy Spirit, and that God washes us and he makes us new. So remember, when you see someone being baptized, it is a sign. It is a sign that tells people that you believe in Jesus and that you trust in him to forgive him of your sins. It shows people that our hearts have been washed clean and we are ready to live a new life in obedience to God. Now, I'm thankful for signs, and, and I want to, to share with you, you know, last night... <clears throat> I read over this scripture and I kept reading over it and in the past we really missed my granny. And I have looked for signs that she's around me. And last night I had a dream and could it be a coincidence that I had studied this right before I went to bed? Um, or could it be a sign? I'll take it as a sign. But my granny came to me in my, in my dream last night and told me how much she loved me and how proud she is of me and how things are going. I'm going to take that as a sign. So I encourage kids, adults, us all, to look for the signs that God has for us and to show us that we are loved and that he is pleased in us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for the signs that you provide for us as reassurance and as gifts of love from you. Dear Lord, we thank you for every Sunday when we come up over the hill or over on the other side of the church. When we appear and we see the sign that no matter the virus or the pandemic that we are having today, when we see this white tent sitting out, we know that you are still here for us. It is a sign that regardless of what this world throws at us, we still have you and we still come together as a church, regardless if it's in a parking lot or in a building. We thank you for your many signs and we thank you for each and every person that's in our church 
and that are here today visiting with us. We pray that you bless us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks to Jennifer. Thanks. Yeah, anybody that would like to come and share a word, or, you know, a word for the uh, for the uh, young folks. Yes, they are still here, and even though we can't come up and, and do the normally thing, the normal things that we have in the past, we still want to remember. Yes, and we're thankful that you're in the parking lot also, more than you know. So, so when, uh, when Jesus came up out of the water and, and God spoke, immediately what happened to Jesus? Right after that, he was driven out into the wilderness. So as part of our Lenten observance, we arrive in the wilderness. So we have arrived. On this first Sunday of Lent, these texts that we read thrust us just suddenly into the wilderness. And we start there. The story of God's promise to Noah after the great flood. This is a, a beautiful passage of hope and promise. And uh, just think about just think about how many nurseries, how many scenes you've seen in uh, nurseries and church nurseries and pediatricians' offices and other places that you have seen the, the paintings and murals of, uh, murals of Noah's Ark, the animals, two by two. But in this context, uh, we can't read without uh, thinking about the destruction hanging over the passage. And we think about uh, what takes place in our epistle uh, lesson. Jesus is preaching to spirits from Noah's day. A statement that no one quite understands uh, or knows how to explain. And of course, from the gospel lesson that we read. We have the baptism of Jesus. The sky is torn open. A heavenly voice descends. And then the Spirit drives Jesus out into the wilderness as we're driven out into the wilderness spiritually during the season of Lent. So we celebrated Ash Wednesday and we have begun the Lenten season. The table is set. Now where do we go? The story of Noah, the great flood, it raises eyebrows because so many people perished. In our 21st century thinking, we think, what could have possibly happened that every single human being, except those included on the ark, would have been deserving of death. In today's reading, we see the covenant with God that God has set the rainbow in the heavens as a promise that God will not flood the entire earth again. But that still doesn't answer the question of why. So how are we to make sense of this bit of hopeful promise without acknowledging and understanding the rest of the story? So we turn to the New Testament. We turn to the New Testament with hope for some guidance. In the reading from 1 Peter, there's little clarity gained. Instead, there's a reference to Jesus preaching to spirits in prison from Noah's day. Jesus went and made a proclamation to the spirits in the prison who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah. During the building of the ark in which a few, eight persons, were saved through water. Now, the commentaries 
are not extremely helpful in providing additional clarity. There are three main schools of thought when it comes to who the spirits are that Jesus is preaching to in the prison. The first theory is that Jesus descended to the underworld to preach to the souls of those who died in the flood. This would imply that there are souls stuck in limbo, awaiting the birth and death of Jesus. The second thought is that Jesus preached to Noah's contemporaries through Noah himself. The thinking goes that the Holy Spirit filled Noah and used him to preach Jesus' message to his living contemporaries. Still, others speculate that the spirits in prison are fallen angels associated with the wickedness that was rampant before the Great Flood. And each of these theories has its own implications and interpretations. It may seem that 1 Peter only adds to our confusion, but fortunately we still have Mark's gospel. The text for today begins with Jesus being baptized, as Jennifer talked about, by John. The heavens were torn apart, and a voice from heaven proclaimed, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Here is a baptism account that is fairly straightforward. You are my son, the beloved. It's a passage about identity. It's a passage that showcases what theologians and philosophers call ontology, or simply meaning Jesus' nature of being. This is where Mark starts his story. Before the temptation in the wilderness, before healings, before miracles, before preaching, Mark starts with the proclamation of identity. Jesus is the very Son of God, the Beloved. With this, we can begin to look backward at other texts, we see the first Peter passage in new light. Whichever way we choose to identify the spirits in prison, the primary purpose of the passage is to point to Jesus' identity. Jesus is the one who suffered, and Jesus is the one who triumphed and now sits at the right hand of God. So what does Jesus' baptism mean? It's very interesting that the author of the epistle lesson from 1 Peter chooses to bring the story of Noah and the flood as a prefiguring of baptism. It is a look backward. The flood was a disaster, whether it should be read as a, uh, you know, as you want to read as a uh, scientific event or a metaphor, but we know that it was a scientific event. The Great Flood was a devastating tragedy. You can find that story in all of history, in every, every religion you find the story of the great flood, a devastating tragedy. So baptism is a look backward. It is a turn toward suffering, toward devastation, even toward death. It's a look backward at the wilderness. The wilderness we have come from, not just individually, but collectively as well. As humanity, as a culture, as religion, we have come 
from a truly wild place. We have suffered. We have caused suffering. While the analogy of the flood is a look backward, it's also a look forward to hope. There's a fundamental shift in humanity after the flood. There's a change. These are people who have been saved. These are people who are beloved. No matter who they are or where they go from here, the fundamental part of their identity remains that they are people who have been rescued. Baptism, according to 1 Peter, is not, not a removal of dirt from the body. No, it's a sign of change of identity, a change in your identity. It's a sign that you have been rescued. You have been cleansed. You have been made new. We are beloved. We may not understand the suffering that has occurred before. We may never know why behind the flood or who are the spirits in the prison but whichever way we read these passages there are two points two points that come to us as clear as day Jesus Christ is with us and Jesus Christ is for us. So the fundamental uh, text today is summed up. Let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ is mighty to save. And taking that one step further, Jesus is mighty to save each and every one of us. Jesus is mighty to save you. Jesus is mighty to save me. As the psalmist writes, God is the God of my salvation. The God who is God of the waters and the mighty floods descended into the depths and fullness of human suffering for us. So there we find our identity in Christ. No matter the pain we've experienced, no matter the pain we are experiencing, no matter the pain we may experience, Christ has been there. Christ is there, and Christ will be there. And so as we enter this season of Lent, we see the wilderness around us. We see the wilderness from which we've come. And we know that there is still indeed wilderness yet to come. There's where we find hope. Through it all. We hold on to the identity of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The identity of God's beloved that ever reminds us Christ is with us and Christ is for us. Amen. Let us pray. Now, as you go back into the world, wherever your path takes you, as God's dear children, through the adoption into God's family by Jesus Christ, go forth, go forth strong, be strong in the Lord and the power of his boundless resources. Put on God's complete armor so that you may sincerely resist the temptation of Satan 
and the methods of Satan's attack. Peace be to you all and love with faith from God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be safe and be well. Don't forget, Trent's going to be out there. Uh, as, you, as you leave the parking lot, he's going to be out there with quite a few various items. Uh, if you have your information sheet completed that Jennifer passed out, we are going to collect that information. So we'll have more ways of getting in touch with you uh, by telephone, by email. Um, I'm going to share that with Marsha, and I'm going to share that with Cleo, and uh, we'll try to share it with everybody as time moves forward. But thank you for any information that you've given us that we didn't have because we like to stay in touch. Have a wonderful week.